And we are back. Pokemon Y Hardcore Nuzlocke. The run continues. Uh, we are moving from the second gym to the third gym. Going to get some first encounters here. But first, we got to beat this Team Flare Grunt. Take out the Hondur. No problem. Nishinoya, the Litleo, is doing really, really good this run. A couple more levels, and we will have the fully evolved Pyroar. I'm super excited for that. I've never been able to use one before, and we're just going to swap into our starter because of the confusion. Don't want to risk any double down damage there. And Shoyo drops back with the Psybeam. Really good stuff. Golbat taking that, and so we're just going to finish off the Golbat, and um, um, it, was, it was a speed tie, and Shoyo went first. So I thought <laughs> I thought our starter would go first again. And I was wrong. Uh, I didn't even make it to the Del Fox. So we have lost our starter as a pre-evolution again in my Pokemon X run. We lost um, our cute little Firefox to the first gym leader. And now we didn't even make it to the third gym. So it's just not meant to be. Let's go get some first encounters and try to rebound from that. As well as the sad, sad showing at the second gym. Let's do it. All right, so on our way to our first encounter here, we run into Karina, the third gym leader, and she's actually going to give us a little bit of a preview here. Now, she doesn't actually use her Lucarios in the gym battle, um, which is very interesting. She has three different fighting types that we'll have to beat here in a second. But first, she has two Lucarios in this fight, and um, they know Bone Rush as well as Power Up Punch for damaging moves and bone rush is a ground type move that can't hit flying types and power up punch is a fighting type move that can't hit ghost types and our drift loon pre-evolution here drift loon just happens to be ghost and flying so it completely walls off both lucarios and they're both just left here swords dancing into the heavens as well as trying to get some metal sounds to lower our defense, but it's not doing anything because they can't actually hit him. So it's a super interesting fight, but our tiny little blimp here just takes out both of them without any issues. Let's go see which first encounters we ended up with in between the second and third gym. All right, for our Route 11 encounter here, it is going to be the throw the big boy version of Sock. I have used Sock quite a bit in the past, so I'm pretty excited to use Throw, and let's see how good he does on the team. For our Reflection Cave encounter, it is going to be the Solosis, the floating psychic blob here. Uh, Reunculus is a very strong psychic type here, so I would not mind having this little guy in the back pocket. And let's see how good she can do for the team or potentially just hold down the box until later. Let's see what happens. Next up, we have the fight against Serena here. And she is a pretty formidable opponent. She's got some tricky fights that you run into throughout the game here. And this one takes place right before the third gym. She has her meow stick here. Just a psychic typing gets the light screen off. We have Nishinoya, the Litleo, out against them. And my game plan is basically just ramp up with work up and try to sweep the team. But um, I think a Psybeam comes down here and does way more damage than I was expecting. And now the ramping up is all for naught. And we can't even get Meowstic to half HP. So I'm just like, um, what do we do? And if you're looking at the team here, it looks like three Pokemon are weak to Psybeam. So... I throw out our little uh, Drifloon here, and it eats a disarming voice, thankfully, so no Psybeam, but there is the Psybeam, and that absolutely crushes the little balloon's HP, and I did minimize for a potential cheese with the evasion, and thankfully it didn't kill me with Psybeam, but now we are really flirting with it, and I am just going all in since I'm too afraid to swap into a different Pokemon. We get two ominous wins off, no Omni Boost, and now we are hurting, and I think we're dead to a disarming voice, which is crazy. So we're in a really tough spot here. Um, I think I had one or two Pokemon already at the level cap in the PC, so I had a couple of reserves here that weren't 
quite where they needed to be. So I often do the little hippo here to try to finish the Meowstic with a sand stream and it chips it to literally one HP. And now the hippo is wondering if it will see the light of day post this fight. And it does because we opt into our Golbat who has to eat a super effective Psybeam and just holds on. So thankfully Golbat's special defense was pretty decent there. And because we swapped, it gave the Sandstorm one more turn to chip the Meowstic down. So really interesting stuff here. And now we're going to have to take out Serena's last two Pokemon on a really, really far back foot here. And let's see who she sends out next. Because she has her starter and she also has one more Pokemon and everybody's getting the level ups here. So going to decide to... Now Stormther is interesting because it always crits um so it's actually pretty decent so it's always hitting for a 90 power and it goes through any defenses but i really like the consistency of seismic toss kind of like a nightshade and then revenge just does so much damage so we end up not taking storm throw and the absol comes down um just a dark typing here so i'm like what do we do and i think we pivot into uh tanaka here the throw for that super effective fighting matchup and it's going to eat the bite no problem there we are under leveled here, but it should be fine. I think we just opt into a revenge in one shot, the stallion, and another bite comes down. We have inner focus, so um, throw couldn't get flinched, which was really nice on top of the rocky helmet, one of the better held items in the game. And then it just so happens that Serena's starter is Frogadier, and which is a water dark typing, I believe, or is it just water? It's just water. So Grey Ninja gets the water dark. But either way, it is a frail frog, and we eat the water pulse, and we swap into our Ivysaur, our pseudo starter here, who gets the super effective Razor Leaf off and finishes the fight. Um, multiple Pokemon in danger of dying there, but we wiggled around and made it out of the, the fight alive, thankfully. And we either have one more first encounter in the gym battle or we're just going straight into the gym. Let's find out what happens next while the drift, uh, the drift loon evolves, of course. And we have arrived at the third gym. We are ready to go against Karina once again with her three fighting types. And um, our strategy this time around is a pretty darn good one. We have the drift blim who dodges almost every single move that her three fighting types have to throw at us. So let's just see if we can minimize out of the gym here while me and Fu can't hit us and then potentially dodge the only move that can, that being the Rock Tomb from the Machoke. So let's do it. That is the game plan. Let's get some minimize down. And I can actually speed this up, but Karina knows what is happening here and withdraws the mean Fu. That is pretty clever, actually. So I'll slow it down here, and we are two evasion right now on top of the 5% mischance Rock Tomb has in this generation. So we are playing with fire a little bit, but Drift Limb's HP bar is really nice, and we're faster than the Macho, that, so that means we're going to be at four times evasion, and Rock Tomb is going to have a really tough time of landing, and now we are max evasion six times over. And now if Rock Tomb does not connect, it is basically over because me and Fu cannot hit us. And I don't think Halucha can hit us either, potentially with the flying press, but I could be wrong. And Machoke sees through the facade and connects with the Rock Tomb, unfortunately. So Driftblim was still able to eat that no problem. And we're just going to keep fishing for that Omni Boost with the Ominous Wind just in case. And we dodge another Rock Tomb. Really good stuff here. Karina probably healing. You can speed that part up. Perfect. Okay, another Ominous Wind comes down. I mean, if you use all five Ominous Winds, you would think one of them might give you the boost, but it is only a 10% chance of happening. But we're still going all in, and we dodge another Rock Tomb, and our final Ominous Wind comes down as the Macho gets both Hyper Potions here. Karina not wanting to lose her buff mascot. And we do not get any boost from the Ominous Wind. So we are just going to have to rely on Gust. Um, we don't have Acrobatics yet, which is a really nice move for Drift Blim to have. But that is a stab, super effective Gust. No problem. And that potentially is the game. Me and Fu cannot hit us. So we're just going to be sitting here dodging any fighting slash normal type moves 
that she throws at us and we're just going to gust away and it just goes for fake out again it doesn't even know what it's doing as it stares down drift blim and if halucha could land a move you would think that karina would throw her out right there so it looks like she's going to be stuck just honing claws until her demise and i absolutely love halucha fighting flying is such a fun typing but that will not save her. It will not change what will happen here. And that is one of the most convincing sweeps I have ever seen. Machoke did land one Rock Tomb, but that was it. And that is three gems down, five to go. Really good stuff. As always, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. And I will catch you on the flip. Peace.